And when you think about it from the Clippers situation, the Clippers are obviously in a situation where they are desperate. They want to put together a winning team, optimize this team. Um, and what better way to do that than a guy that can get you 20 and 10 every night, being able to be a facilitator, being able to be a catch and shoot guy, um, being able to orchestrate. And that's something that the Clippers have been missing for a while now. A uh, playmaking point guard, ironically, Chris Paul, SGA, guys like that. Um, they shipped out. Um, and now they have James Harden. Now, from the situation of James Harden playing next to Russell Westbrook, they did it in OKC, they did it in Houston, and now they're doing it with L.A. And, of course, that dynamic has had mixed results, right? Of course, they've gotten to the playoffs, they produce big numbers, but we've seen it fall flat. And that puts Westbrook, as everyone's saying, that puts Westbrook in a different situation because he's been playing so well for the Clippers. It's weird that the Clippers will turn around and – now put James Harden, who needs the ball in his hands, needs to create, obviously needs to facilitate. And now that puts Russ in a bad spot. Understand that. Understand that. They're going to try to figure out a way to make it work. That's the whole point of this. Um, I also think this is insurance policy in case Paul George, in case Russell Westbrook, <laughs> in case Kawhi Leonard, any of those guys have injuries over the season. And to question that is just like James Harden has missed some games of these past couple of seasons has been wearing down a little bit, not as explosive. Um, understand it from that standpoint as well. But in terms of how this is going to work with the Clippers, this gives them a little boost of a chance, right? Like they, they have a facilitator, something that they were missing for a long time. There's going to be a hole there on defense, especially when you give up Nick Batum, Robert Covington, a young guy like KJ Martin, Marcus Morris, those guys that were there that played well for the Clippers. Now that you trade those guys and you bring in James Harden, obviously James Harden's star power is more important than those other guys, right? Like in terms of what he brings to the table to unlock that offense consistently is what they're hoping for. Um, now you're just hoping how that pans out, that the offense flows, everything goes correctly with James Harden at the helm, controlling, making moves easy for everybody. I don't think Kawhi Leonard is going to be affected too much. He's going to get his shots, obviously. Paul George is going to, I think, be that hybrid guy where he's going to be able to play between James Harden and Kawhi Leonard. I think that's going to be a big help. But the odd man out, it seems like it's Russell Westbrook. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, Lineup-wise, I don't know if they're trying to make it like he plays a certain amount of minutes on the starters and vice versa, who goes to the bench. I don't see James Harden going to the bench. I don't know if they're going to put Russell Westbrook on the bench. Obviously, they're going to try to trot it out and see how that works going forward. But, again, obviously, James Harden is going to bring something to the table in terms of spacing the floor, facilitating passing. I'm not going to dwell on the bad things too much. The only question I have is James Harden going to be able to adjust where – he doesn't have the ball in his hands all the time because one Kawhi is going to need the ball in his hands. Paul George is going to need the ball in his hands. And when you're playing on the court with Russell Westbrook, he's going to need the ball in his hands to be his most effective. Um, so that's the thing that's going to be a question mark, right? Like we've seen you not really willing, really willing to adjust full term commitment wise, mental wise to a system and say, Hey, I'm going to stick to this no matter what. It's always been a little bit about a little selfishness there, which is okay. But in terms of James Harden wanting to be the main guy facilitating, creating the place, orchestrating everything, have everything on his shoulders in terms of creating. And we've seen you fall flat with that. Now, luckily, you have two other guys that you can depend on. But what's going to happen when Paul George sits there and goes, hey, man, what are you doing? Or Kawhi Leonard sits there and goes, hey, man, what are you doing? All these little things are adding up where it's like you're going to be put in the same situation and now you have more guys to feed the ball to, two all-star guys. How is that going to fare when you don't get your touches, when you don't get the freelance of the offense? Now, the only saving grace for this, which I think people haven't talked about, is Tyron Luke, um, a guy that has been able to deal with multiple superstars, been able to deal with different lineups on the fly, been able to come up with most adjustments in playoff games continuously. So 
looking at it from that standpoint, it's going to be interesting to see how James Harden and Tyronn Lue gets a, get a, get a, get along because Tyronn Lue is not going to put up with that crap <laughs> that James Harden was doing in Houston that he was trying to do in Philly, it looks like. And neither was Doc Rivers. But just in general, I don't think Tyronn Lue is going to put up with that. But I think they're going to obviously try to collaborate, collaborate and put the best foot forward to making this work. And where their pecking order is in the Western Conference, I'm going to say they're about the same. I'm not saying that they're not going to be a better team like this wasn't a positive move. But in terms of the Western Conference landscape, I don't see them being better than better than the Nuggets. And that's the standpoint where a lot of Western teams are. I just don't think they're better than the Nuggets, which is OK. But can does this give them a better chance? I guess slightly because of the talent, star power, whatever the case may be, you want to say there. But we have to see it, right? Like, this is what it is for the Clippers. We have to wait and see how this works. And I think that's the biggest thing for James Harden. And hopefully he can make his debut, I believe, on Monday. I believe they play the Knicks. Hopefully he can make this work and hopefully not be his last stop in his career, right? Because obviously we're looking around and it's like, this is probably going to be his last stop if it doesn't work out here, because I don't think too many NBA teams are going to continue to try to pay him the money that he's looking for and continue to deal with these problems every season. So we'll see how that pans out. Now we're going to be talking about Victor.